guys, Shake Rattle and Roll coming back at you with another video, and today we're finishing our NFL Power Rankings. Uh, the video will be posted, this video will be posted right after the other video that I am posting. So, there will be two videos. So, here we are. Let's hop into this thing. Um, don't forget to click that subscribe button to subscribe for more great content. Today, in this, in this video, we'll be doing the top 14 teams. So, I did um, 32 to 15 in the other video. Now we will be doing 14 to 1 this video. Coming in at 14, we have the Indianapolis Colts, and the Colts are a very good. I think the Colts will be very competitive this upcoming season. But the Colts and the Titans both have a very tough schedule, so it might prevent them from doing as good things as they might could in other division. But the Colts, they are. Colts and the Titans both have holes. The Colts' hole is at wide receiver, and honestly, the Colts' D has holes as well. They could, in my opinion, they could use another corner. They could use another linebacker. They could definitely use another defensive lineman. Their receiving core isn't that great at wide receiver and tight end, and that's where the Colts' problems are. But they, their main addition this offseason was training for Carson Wentz, and I think that that was a massive addition that the Colts needed to make. I think he will regain his MVP life form under Frank Reich. Not exactly MVP form, but definitely quality starting quarterback form. Coming at 13, it's Tennessee Titans. Their offense should be electric in 2021. But their problem is they really have no defense. Their defense wasn't good last season, and I really don't think it will be good again this season. They... Did, they really don't need linebacker, but every other position on defense, they definitely could use. They, uh, defensively, they they only signed Bud Dupree to come off the edge. Harold Landry should thrive under there. Uh, but their D-line, I, other than Jeffrey Simmons, I really don't like their D-line. Uh, their corners, they really have Caleb Farley, and Janoris Jenkins should be okay, but they have nothing else. Christian Fulton is like whatever. Same with Elijah Molden, but Kevin Byard is like the only really proven player in their secondary that I think will be elite. But their offense should be electric with Ryan Tannehill, Derrick Henry, Julio Jones, AJ Brown. Uh, they really don't have tight end or a third receiver, but they should be good otherwise. Um, their O line is still very good. Coming in at number 12, I have the Arizona Cardinals. The Cardinals. Now, they're, they're, they're a quality team. It'll just be about putting things together for them. They are, they're they're going to have a good offense. They have Kyler Murray under center. They've addressed their O-line by um, training for Rodney Hudson. They have DeAndre Hopkins, one, the best receiver in the league, in my opinion. Um, they also have, a, they signed A.J. Green. They have Christian Kirk. They drafted Rondale Moore. They already have Andy Isabella. Their receiving core is loaded. Running back and tight end can be upgraded, but they should be okay. Defensively, they drafted Zayvon Collins round one. They have Zayvon Collins and Isaiah Simmons now. That They should be an elite duo. They let Hassan Reddick go, which is kind of a big loss in my opinion. But they made one of the, arguably one of the biggest moves of this offseason by signing J.J. Watt to fix help fix their D-line. They have... Chandler Jones coming back, and Chandler Jones and J.J. Watt should be another dynamic duo in the Cardinals' front seven. But the Cardinals, what the Cardinals really need is corner, and I think they could, I think they're currently the top team for Xavier Howard. Uh, Xavier Howard wants out of Miami, and I think the Cardinals could definitely get him. Uh, they definitely need corner, though. They have nothing. Don't, Malcolm Butler is only good with the Patriots. Byron Murphy is a slot corner. They need an outside corner badly, and Xavier Howard would help their team out a lot. Their safeties are good with Buda Baker. Uh, Isaiah Simmons could also play safety. So I could definitely see the Cardinals being very good this upcoming NFL season if everything goes to plan. Coming in at number 11, we have the Seattle Seahawks, who, man, their offense is going to be good. We know their offense is going to be good. They have... Um, Russell Wilson, Chris Carson, DK Metcalf, Tyler Lockett, and they signed Gerald Everett. Their offense is going to be very good. 
but their off o line is still bad. Even though they dr traded for Gabe Jackson, their offensive line is still bad, dude. They Dwayne Brown's okay, but the rest is just still not good. Damian Lewis actually is okay. That that that's three out of five positions that are okay, but the other two really aren't that good. Um, their D. It, it played better towards the end of last season, but looking at it on paper, it's terrible. Zero corners. They really didn't have a pass rush last season. And when you look at it on paper, it's Bobby Wagner and Jamal Adams. That's really it. So, are they really going to fare much better? I think they're probably going to have another early exit in the playoffs. At, coming in at number 10, we have the New England Patriots. Uh... A team that fixed their team this offseason. Best offseason in the NFL. Best team. Best offseason. Okay, that's where I'm going with this. They signed everyone in free agency. Nelson Aguilar, Kendrick Bourne, Matt Judon, Devon Godshaw, Jalen Mills. Uh, why am I naming players? It don't matter. Um, They traded for Trent, uh, a former Patriot, Trent Brown. They signed Jonu Smith and... Hunter Henry. The Patriots had a great offseason. They drafted Mac Jones, who could potentially be Brady's successor. They will be very, very good in 2021. They have their quarterback duo. Their running backs are going to be good because they're the Patriots. Their, uh, their tight ends are going to be good. They're, I think they could have used Julio Jones. The Patriots really could have used Julio Jones. But their O-line is fantastic. Their defense is going to be great. They also sound Kyle Vanoi. It's coming back to me now. Their corners are great. The Patriots will be contending in 2021. At number 9, I have the San Francisco 49ers. 49ers. Uh, their main goal addition this offseason was Trey Lance. They traded so much to get him a number 3 overall. And they got him. And he should be their franchise QB. Uh, Jimmy G, they could potentially trade. Um... But the rest of their team is very solid as well. If they can stay healthy, their team will be very solid. Coming in at number 8, we have the Miami Dolphins. The Dolphins. Here's why I have the Dolphins so high. They have improved rapidly. Brian Flores is one of the top head coaches in the NFL. Because the Dolphins... um, In 2019, the Dolphins were by far the worst team in the NFL. They had zero talent on their roster. Uh, they had, I believe they did have Xavier Howard back then, but they had Xavier Howard, uh, Mike Isicki. They really had nothing. They had nothing. And Brian Flores coached that team to win five games. They won five games with that roster. It's insane. And they then fixed it by following up in 2020 with a 10-6 and six record and almost making the playoffs. The Dolphins will make another big jump this season and make the playoffs, I think, for sure. The Dolphins have two, I think, will improve in 2021, improve that he's a franchise QB. They, they got built around Tua by signing Will Fuller, drafting Jalen Waddell, when they already have Devontae Parker, Preston Williams, and Mike Isicki. The running backs I don't like, but... Their O-line is okay, and the Dolphins are going to be a very good team. Their defense is already very solid. Their their defense is going to be very solid. The Dol they drafted Jalen Phillips. The Dolphins are going to be very competitive in 2021. At number 7, we have the Green Bay Packers, and they would probably be a little bit higher if they had Aaron Rodgers still. I mean, they still do have Aaron Rodgers. But it all depends on Aaron Rodgers. If the pa if he doesn't come back, the Packers will probably not be that competitive. If he does, the Packers will compete for a Super Bowl, and I, that's why that's where I stand with the Packers right now. And their team really just depends on Aaron Rodgers. At number six, I have the Los Angeles Rams. Their main they literally did nothing else except this. Their main thing this offseason was trade for Matthew Stafford. And it automatically makes them a Super Bowl contender, in my opinion. Jared Goff was basically getting the play told to him by Sean McVay. And Matthew Stafford will fare so much better in L.A. He loves it there. The Rams love this. The fit is there. The Rams will be competing for a Super Bowl in 2021. At number five, I have the Baltimore Ravens. The Ravens. 
uh, they needed to address the receiver position because their receivers couldn't run routes that season. They needed more receiving help. They signed Sammy Watkins, drafted Rashad Bateman, uh, also drafted Tylen Wallace, who was a great uh, pick in the fourth round. They already have Mark Andrews. Their running backs are going to be good. J.K. Dobbins, Gus Edwards should be good. Their O-line, they have Ronnie Stanley, uh, who's very good. They did lose Orlando Brown Jr., but they fixed it by signing Alejandro Villanueva. They're, I don't love the interior O-line of the Ravens O-line, but their D is going to be good. They replaced Matthew Junon with Odafe Owe. They drafted. They uh, have Patrick Queen at linebacker. Their D-line's going to be good. Brandon Williams and Calais Campbell. There's another guy there that I'm not thinking of. Oh, or Derek Wolf, uh, who's just really okay. But in the secondary, they have arguably the best cornerback duo in the league in Mar- with Marlon Humphrey and Marcus Peters. They're going to be a very good team in 2021, but I think they will be worse than my favorite team, the Cleveland Browns. My Browns have the second most complete roster in the NFL behind the Bucks. They are the team to beat in the AFC North, in my opinion, because they have no holes except defensive tackle. They have a, a great offense. Best running back duo in the league with Kareem Hunt and Nick Chubb. Baker Mayfield is very good. Receiving duo of Odell Beckham Jr. and Jarvis Landry is insane. They have three very good tight ends in David Njoku, Harrison Bryant, and uh, Austin Hooper. They have one of the best top five O-line for sure in the league. They have one of the best edge rushing duos in the league in Miles Garrett and Jadavion Clowney. They address linebacker. They signed Anthony Walker. They drafted Jeremiah Usukoromoa, who was a great pick in round two. They uh, address corner. They already had Denzel Ward and um, uh, uh, Greedy Williams, who was oh, who's okay, but he has not seen the field. They just signed Troy Hill. They drafted Greg Newsom in the fir- first round. And to think that they could potentially sign Richard Sherman or draft, uh, I mean, or uh, trade for Xavier Howard, the Brown, and the, they signed uh, uh, John Johnson. They already got Ronnie, Ronnie Harrison and Grant Delpit. Their offense and defense are going to be top five in the league. I mean, top ten for sure. But. The Browns are in a great spot. The Bills at number three. Uh, the Bills are a very quality team. They have they're going to be good offense. Lose Josh Allen, Stephon Diggs, um, and they signed Emmanuel Sanders. They won't lose a beat there. Cole Beasley's a great slot option. Their O line isn't too bad. Their running backs aren't that good, but they they're okay. Defensively, they were not that great last season, but they fixed their need pass rush. They Drafted Greg Rousseau in the first round. They drafted uh, Boogie Basham in the second round, Carlos Basham. They're, they kept Matt Milano around, who nobody thought they would keep around. Tremaine Edmonds. The Bills are going to be very good with Tredavis Wright. Probably the best safety duo in the league with Jordan Poirier and uh, Micah Hyde. And number two, we have the Chiefs. The Chiefs' main goal was to fix their O-line, and they did it in a big way. They have so many O-linemen now. They signed, they released um, Eric Fisher and Mitchell Schwartz, their top two tackles. And people thought, what are they doing? But then they fixed it. They signed, uh, they brought Kyle Long out of retirement. They signed Austin Blythe. They traded for Orlando Brown Jr. They signed, they drafted Creed Humphrey. Their Chiefs O line is going to be dominant, and it will help. And Lauren A. Darn, t- what, Tardif, the guy. Uh, Lauren A. I forget his name, but he's coming back as well. The defense is underrated. It's always top 10 under Steve Spagnuolo's defense. At number one, it's the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. They bring all 22 stars back from their championship team. They will compete for Super Bowl again this season. Good potentially rebeat. Hope you guys enjoyed this video uh, of my first NFL Power Rankings. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in the next one.